Hello again and welcome. Today we're going to have a little fun playing with some high voltages. So let me give you a little context. I was out on the EV blog and I was reading this thread. It's titled, Interesting and Sad Case of Electrical Injury. Now normally I don't read threads like this because I'm not an electrician. So typically when I'm using a multimeter here at home, I'm not concerned about safety. So this person had posted this story about an apprentice who wasn't wearing a PPE and essentially what happens is they go across a 4,000 volt line and the meter blows up and he's got some of the photos here. Somebody had sorted out what meter it was and they thought it was maybe this one here. Of course this always stirs up more videos on arc flashes. There's an interesting post here by Captain Don. The probe leads don't seem like they can sustain 4,000 volts safely. That could very well be true. It's been a long time since I've looked at that standard that describes how they test the multimeter leads. And I'm not sure what a typical multimeter lead would even break down at. So here's the post that actually got me interested in this thread. It's written by a member named Marco. What actually happens to a Cat3 600 volt fluke if you connect continuous 4KV to it? So this is my first post responding to this Marco guy. I assume that you're asking about the AC's 50-60 Hz with unlimited current for all practical purposes and with the meter set to its AC volt mode only. It's certainly possible to see if the meter could be damaged using low currents without too much risk. My guess is most would be damaged, but it's not something that I've ever considered trying. Then I gave him a link to a site that actually runs arc flash testing. Marco responds with a 1 meg series resistance to the input voltage limiting. It's going to burn through pretty fast. With a couple watt 10 meg series resistance and assuming the selector switch and PCB don't arc over, it could probably hold off the voltage indefinitely. I think it's 1 meg though. But again, just to see if a meter would withstand 4000 volts, we don't need a lot of current. Chaparus responds, if it arcs over is key. The question is, will it? So let's see, is there anything else of interest in here? Uh, just, uh, we were talking about the fault currents inside of my home. It seemed to upset a few people. Don't know why. I just took some measurements and posted some data. Here Johansson responds to Marco's question. What happens? I fully expect it to explode. Again, that's going to depend on how much energy is available. As it was mentioned earlier, of course, 4KV off of, for example, a CRT power supply, it's not going to cause anything to explode. Um, yeah, I think that's basically it. So let's get on with our testing here. Again, somebody had mentioned a neon sign transformer, and that's what we have here. This particular transformer is 115 volts primary. The secondary is 12,000 volts and it's a 360 VA rated transformer. To use this transformer at lower voltages, we have to limit the input voltage. So off to my left, you can see I have a variac attached to it. Of course, to measure the output voltage, we need to divide it down to something that the multimeter can handle. This is a 10X divider that I made. This is actually potted. It's made for high voltages. If you're interested in seeing how this was put together, I made a video on it. Let's just go ahead and we'll turn up our primary voltage. Of course we could make a bigger arc with this. If I just move these electrodes apart a little bit further. This is where the transformer would normally run at. We're not going to be using it at that kind of voltage today. So what we're going to do is attach our attenuator to the output of the transformer. And we'll turn on our Bryman meter. And we get that where you can see it on the camera. Alright, and what I'm going to do is just close this gap up a little bit. So the first test we're going to do is have a look to see if a standard set of multimeter leads would break down. These are about the cheapest leads you're going to find. These were supplied with the Free Harbor Freight Meters. So what I've done is I've taken one set of these leads and I've twisted them this way and then I wound them up into a coil and tightly wrapped them together. Basically what I'm trying to do is get these wires to be very close coupling. On the other end of them we'll just leave these things dangle. 
I'm going to attach these right to the output of the transformer like so then I'm going to suspend them in the air on this block of wood now what we'll do is go ahead and increase the voltage across these and let's see if these leads will break down so there's 2000 volts right there there's 3000 volts and here's 4000 volts right here and you can see our leads are not breaking down let's try taking them up a little higher Again, here's 4,500 volts, and they still are not breaking down. And here our spark gap just fired. Now, again, I want to be very clear that I am not suggesting that anybody would ever take leads like this and use them out in the field with the AC mains. Let's try the same test with the second set of leads. Again, these have never been used before. Again, I'm just twisting these things up basically are turning into a ball here <laughs> I need enough lead where we can still attach to the transformer looks pretty good and what I'll do is just tie this mess together with a tie wrap like so and again we'll plug this into the transformer and suspend it off of our block of wood so again here's 2000 volts there's 3,000, 4,000, 4,500, 4,700, and our gap breaks down. What we can do is just increase our gap a little bit. Maybe we can see where the leads actually will break down at. At about 6,000 volts, I can hear this bundle singing. I'm just going to move the camera in a little closer. Again, I'll go ahead and turn up the voltage. So right here is 4,000. Here's 5,000. I don't know if you can hear that. This is uh, 6.1 kV right here. She's singing pretty good. Oh, so the main gap just broke down. Again, I've looked at a fair number of multimeters. There's definitely a difference between what I consider low grade meters and your high grade ones. Typical high grade meters are built like this. You'll have your AC line coming in. This will go to a 1K surge rated resistor. That's in series with a PTC and then we have a couple of MOVs here that are in series. Looks like our MOVs had a clamping voltage of 1.36 kV. So that's two of these in series. So our clamping voltage here is basically 2.7 kV. And then the rest of the circuitry is looking at the voltage across these two MOVs. Here's the front end for the U1231A. This is an Agilent meter that I looked at. This meter is a little unique in that instead of using MOVs, you can see they have gas discharge tubes. So I'm not suggesting that the meters are all identical, but I am suggesting that they typically have some kind of a high energy surge protection that's followed by some kind of a high speed clamp that's engaged when those low voltage modes are selected. This meter on the left, you can see it's not been marked. This is one of Bryman's early prototypes of the BM780 series. They had provided this meter to me during my testing. This meter was missing components when I received it. They just kind of stuck it in the box. You may remember I showed this in a few videos where I stripped some parts off of this using a 100 year old blowtorch. But you can see the front end of this meter is all basically intact. So here's our two surge rated resistors. Here's our PTCs. You can see there's a small one and a big one. Those are in series with these two MOVs, which tie to the common point of this MOV, which then returns back to the ground plane. I've gone ahead and taken this apart from what I remembered. The meter didn't have any switch contacts when they supplied it. And I had stripped some of the components off of the back of this. You can see like probably these along here, maybe down in here. So this meter is not the same, but again, this basic front end that we're looking at that is still all intact 
So again, if we're looking at our input lead here, that's going to connect to these two resistors at this common point. You can see it's a dead short. And then these two are, it looks like a 1K ohm resistor. And you can see it's 1K and a 1K. Dead on. And then that goes through these two PTCs here. So if we just go to the back side, you can see it's 2.37K ohms. And on this one, it's a 2. 86k ohms basically the same here you can see where they attach to the two mobs those two mobs are tied together to this common point which attached to this third mob which again this goes back to the ground point so if we go between here and the ground return again you can see that's a dead short so very typical of how these meters are made Again, nothing like the Fluke 77. I did find one of those in a dumpster or a meter similar to that era. Didn't do very well with my transient testing. All right, let's go ahead. We'll turn on the Variac. And let's start increasing the voltage. So here's about 200 volts. Here's about 500. Here's a thousand. Here is two thousand. Again, you can see the transformer is folding back. So 30 milliamps is just not going to cut it. But I would imagine we could leave this thing indefinitely sitting with this much voltage across it and it's not going to cause any problem with the front end of this meter yeah I'm gonna take that back I can feel a lot of heat in the mobs as well as the PTC's so I would imagine if we left it like that long enough we probably would damage the mobs so one of the comments was about the circuit board itself breaking down of course with this front end we can't get the voltage high enough to cause anything to break down but what we can do real quickly is just pull this one common mob and that will allow this whole clamp circuit to float along with everything that comes after it okay, you can see I've just lifted the one leg of the mob right here now it should no longer present that low impedance path I'm guessing something's gonna break down now all right Go ahead and turn on the Variac and we'll start bringing up the voltage. So there's about a thousand volts right there. There's two thousand volts. Oh, I can hear it. Yeah, I can't see where it's, it's definitely sizzling. Let's get the camera down here a little closer. So again, here's about a thousand volts. There's two thousand. There's twenty-five hundred. Oh, right there, right across the switch contacts. This is like at about 2800 volts, so not quite the 4000 volts. I'll turn up the voltage a little higher. <laughs> and it flashes out. Still pretty impressive. So yeah, I'm not sure really what we've learned from this testing other than don't play with high voltages and let you know what you're doing. And if you're going to use a multimeter, use some kind of a high voltage probe or an attenuator to limit what the meter is actually being exposed to. Well, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you enjoyed the short video. Until the next time, we'll see you then. Later.